So on to round five, you're going to be asked questions about delay load imports and bound imports. So again, bound imports, those are the pre-filled in entries. Delay load, it's got its own data structure off to the side where it's got you know, one entry per DLL. Looks a little something like this, right? One entry per DLL pointing at its own import address table, its own import address table that's pre-filled in with stub code addresses, and then it's got a normal zone. Names table and so forth. So, on to round five. And as I said, this is probably the hardest round because for some of this stuff, I'm pretty sure none of the tools actually like interpret the delay load stuff. So, whenever you basically you're going to run into, you're going to be like asked questions about delay load imports for 64 bit things, right? P view can't interpret 64 bit. And CFF Explorer doesn't expose the 64 bit stuff, but I still want you to try it by looking at the data description, right? Looking at the structure description specifically, so that you're here what you should be looking at. I want you specifically looking at the data structure on <clears throat> page six in part three. It says missing from the picture. image bound import descriptor it says missing from the picture it says image bound import descriptor this gives you basically everything you need to know to interpret something we know the data directory entry is going to point at those and we know that the time is going to be time date stamp which is four bytes big offset to module name that's two bytes big that's an RVA where if you go to that RVA you'll see which DLL it's talking about and then you've got two bytes of you know, either forward or refs or not defined. So between those two, I might ask you like, you know, what's the, you know, how many delay load imports are there for foo.dll, right? You'll have to actually go to that offset module name RVA. You'll have to go that many, you know, RVA bytes into your file to find which module it's actually referring to. And then uh, you'll have to go from that, wait, and then, no, yeah. All right, I'm pointing at the bound imports thing, not the delay load imports. Do you need anything for bound imports? I think you're going to have to do that for bound imports as well. Because bound imports is not exposed by uh, that bound imports. Well, I don't know. We'll see. You'll ask me a question. I'll tell you the answer. Yeah, for the delay load, that's slide 18 there, right? But it's the same notion, right? You have to look at the sizes here. If, it, if the size says RVA uh, is 32 bits, always 64, 32 bits. Binary doesn't matter. It's always 32 bits. And basically, you would have to interpret, you know, the, you'd have to find the 64-bit import address table based on pulling the RVA out of the, you know, you'd have to go 32 bits in to get the DLL name, and 32 bits in to get the HMOD, and 32 bits in to get the IAT, and so forth. So, like I said, this round's going to be nasty. The sooner you get started, the sooner it'll be done. Go at it. So it's 32 bits, whether it's The RDA is always 32 bits, yep. So I didn't have that before, and it's not entirely clear, but. And I would say take your break if you need it, five minutes, but it's all mixed together right now. Five minutes break plus however many minutes we need to get at least a silver medal winner this time. <laughs> I don't think we, we said who won last time. I haven't got his gold. We'll have to go back and we'll look through your, your this is why we have the CSV files. We can go figure out who the silver medal winner was from last time. All right, I've got one bug. I got a question. What is the RVA that points directly at the delay load import address table? Right. So how I would find that? I want to find the delay load import address table. So I need to first start from the delay load uh, descriptor table. Right. Problem is the delay load descriptor table is not even filled in in this binary. So I would normally go to the delay load import descriptor table from this, and it's just not there. So you get this question. You may have an error. Although I'm going to try just zero, and somehow that's correct. <laughs> that's not what it's supposed to be, but 
Somehow that zero that's there is correct. Where's my bug list? And this is why I have that mode one where I can like take a seed and I can recreate the exact sequence that caused it. So I can actually debug these things. How do you find the timestamp for it found? How do you find the timestamps? Do you have a 64 bit one? Uh, 32. 32 it's easy, 64 it's hard. I think it's 64. <laughs> Alright, 64 bit thing with bound in points. I think I have something I can show. Because if it was 32, then PE view. Yeah. PE would just show. Alright, so I think I have one that has that that I can kind of show. Alright, here's one of those nasty cases. So, 64 bit binary that's bound, and you know, I guess I'm asking you for the time date stamp for some particular one, right? Start, as always, at the data directory, and you need to find, find the bound import RBA. Alright, so that gets us to the bound import. <coughs> Directory, for instance. So 2E0, the line is it. It'll potentially be different in yours. Is it different in yours? It's oh. actually the same. It's a different okay. file, but it's <laughs> So 2E0, and then this is where it gets tricky. You now have to go to the actual raw data, just clicking on section headers, and don't like click into any of the sections. Just click on section headers. This will basically be giving you, down here you can see MZ, so now you're looking at the beginning of the file, right? Okay. And we know that 2E0 was the RVA, like in memory, but it's also, when it's that low, it's probably also the file offset, 2E0. So there's this little arrow down here that gives us go to offset. That's actually saying file offsets. So we're going to put in 2E0 there. All right, now this doesn't look like anything. This doesn't look like real data, but it is real data. So, what we're seeing here is this is the time date stamp. Four bytes of time date stamp. Two bytes of RBA to, uh, I think I forgot to talk about this, yeah. Two bytes of RBA to the name of whichever time date stamp, like which module are we talking about right now. And then two bytes of um, you know, forwarder references or whatever, right? So right now we need to interpret these eight bytes according to the structure on page six, I believe it was, right? Slide six says missing from the picture image bound import descriptor. So right now at this 2E0 offset, we've got an array of these things. Time date stamp, offset, module name, and then forwarder reps. Now here's the thing where I have to actually correct myself versus what I said before. Or at least I didn't make it as clear as I should. Yeah, I mean, okay. Yeah. I took myself by surprise in the notes before and I didn't make it as clear as I should have. Back in the bound imports, this is one of these annoying things. Right here, this is the data structure we were just talking about. Offset module name, as it says on the next slide, and I actually listened to my slides. Offset module name is not a base relative RBA. It is an offset from the beginning of the first import descriptor. So that's tricky. Let's look at this concretely. We've got a time date stamp, and then we've got this offset to module name, but that is not like 58 bytes from the beginning of the file. That's 58 bytes from the beginning of this array. So that's just far enough to like put it right down here somewhere, right after this array. So going back to this example I was just showing you, I said we're going to treat this as a time date stamp. It's zero. And now we've got this. It's going to be a little endian, and that's another tricky thing. It's little endian, so it's actually 0, 0, 2, 0. And that's the offset from the beginning of this structure. So it's 2E0 plus 2,0. So we go plus 10 plus 20. So this right here is going to be the string. Right? So this plus 0020 
is equal to MSVCRT. So this eight bytes right here, which is very hard to interpret, is actually MSVCR keys found in ports directory entry. Now we go to the next things, right? So two, four, four bytes of zero. That's our time date stamp again. Like I said, I just made this with uh, CFF Explorer, so apparently didn't fill it in fully. Then now we've got another little ending offset, 2D, and that's going to be the offset to our next string. Well, we can just see 2-0 was here, 2D is going to be here. It's kernel 32.dml. So it's pretty much in order. We've got MSV. Actually, you know what? I can't blame CFF Explorer. This is my fault. I'm pretty sure. Do I, do I make this bound thing myself? I can't remember what I made this. We'll find the culprit. I guarantee you that. But anyways, it's just these eight bytes at a time which you interpret according to that structure in there, right? Four bytes time date stamp, two bytes little Indian, and kind of flip it around, offsets to a string, and then the string array, which thankfully is in the right order. So it's MSVCR, kernel 32, and TDLL. And so what was the specific question it was asking? I wanted to know what year. All right, so what year? Zero seconds plus, you know, zero seconds after 1970. 1970. 1970, right? <laughs> so you interpret this as a time date stamp, even though it's not a nice, you know, large number time date stamp, it's still a second since 1970, and it's zero, and that's what it is. Correct. Zero seconds since 1970. Yeah. See how annoying it is when the tools don't actually just interpret things for you? Damn. But this is how you would have to do it if you were writing a program. If you want to write a program that parses this stuff, you have to go in and just follow the RVAs, interpret according to some data structures. And this is just you manually having to do this data structure interpretation. Here. Yeah. You have to figure out which name this is associated with. MSVCR. This one is associated with kernel 32. That's all. It's just annoying. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. So little endian means that every pair of bytes. Little endian means every byte. It's not even necessarily a pair of bytes. It can be, you know, four bytes. But it's byte wise, not bit wise. It's flipped. Yeah, hey, there you go. That's another good hack. Yeah. So here's a cheat, <laughs> right? So you can interpret things like this when you've got a bound import data structure, right? Or you can figure out you know, what the ordering should be. Now, strictly speaking, this would not be the case. But for this purpose, it will work, right? I can kind of show you already right here. MSVCR, then kernel 32, then NTDLL, right? You can kind of see that in the strings. And so what I'm telling you is that you know, this is the time date stand for MSVCR. This is the you know, offset to the string, which proves that it's for MSVCR. And this is the you know, number of forward references. Uh, what Oliver was just doing is he was just flopping back to here and going, oh, I know it goes MSVCR and then kernel 32. So that mostly gets you the order if you want to like just say, oh, what order should, if you ask me a question about kernel 32, I know it's not going to be the first data structure I look at, right? It's going to be the second data structure I look at. But as you saw when you actually go look at that offset, you know, it had the forwarded refs thing kind of thing. It had three entries, it didn't have just two. That's because of that forwarder refs kind of thing. So, 2E0, right? And why is that? If you actually look at the second entry, you see that it has a non zero forwarder refs. It has a zero one entry there as well. So, that's why this is the you know, real forwarded thing. With you know, bound import, bound import, forward arrests, null entry, and he was clicking back to the import directory, which at least tells you if it's asking you a question about a particular thing, you can assume the ordering is pretty much in here. But if you're going to assume that ordering, you may as well just assume the ordering based on those string table that you see immediately after the stuff anyway. Who's the he was asked, you know, what is the, what year was a, you know, particular thing, and he was asking for kernel 32. It said, what is the year that kernel 32 was compiled, and he just assumed it was the first thing, but, you know, if he had looked here, he would have said, oh, kernel 32 is the second thing, right? I need to go from the first data structure to the second data structure, and take that thing's time bit step, which happened to be a zero. Basically, tomorrow, what we're going to come in and do is we're going to do a full class race to, through round five kind of thing. So you probably want to get this round five stuff down now if you expect to get through all five rounds tomorrow. We're, you know, I'm going to test it out, make sure I get us a 
an entry which hopefully doesn't have any crashes or anything in it, but simultaneously, if you get certain questions wrong and I don't follow the exact same order, if you got the fifth one wrong and you got the sixth one wrong, you know, you kind of diverge in terms of getting to the end uh, in the same thing. So I can't guarantee no crashes, but we'll do as best as we can tomorrow. So first thing tomorrow, we'll basically be running through all five rounds, all in order, and we'll just see, you know, who can get there fastest. And basically, it's just a good data collection for me. And, uh, and then from there, we'll, we'll continue on. But